Hey, what is going on guys? They were checking out something new from Bandai. They've started this new line of girl gun lady kits here and they look kind of interesting. I wanted to check one out. I'm not sure I'll be building a lot of these, but I wanted to at least build one of them, see what it's like, and then let you guys know what it's like in case you're also interested in checking this out. So this goes along with an actual TV series, I guess, that they're doing there. You can see there in the background, but it's a one-to-one -one scale kind of handgun model, basically, that you're building, and also this Mecha Musume style little girl character as well there too. So this is the Attack Girl Gun version Alpha Tango, and the Lady Commander Alice set box. So you got the two of those in the set. And there's some of the sets are like just for the weapon and there's I think other sets that are going to be coming out that's like just the girl characters. So you can see there's a bunch of different stuff coming out. But for now let's go ahead and check this one out and see what it's like. Alright, so for the box art here you can see featured kind of less prominently over here is our actual girl character, an illustration of the character that you'll be building with this kit. And then the gun, it looks to be like basically an image of the actual model kit. Uh, and then the main image there, they're sort of in the background, but it's kind of taking up most of the box, is this picture of the characters of the anime series. And of course, it's high school girls in like, a, I guess there's like a modeling club or something like that. I've not watched it, but anyway, I guess it says over here that two girl gun fight cards are also included in this set. So I guess that's something that I don't plan on using, but that is also included in here. Pretty good sized box because you have the one to one scale handgun. I think it's probably going to be taking up a lot of the parts there. Uh, on the side of the box, basically the same thing there. On the bottom of the box here is where you can see how the kit and the handgun are looking side by side. Uh, so it's going to be much smaller there. Obviously, you can see uh, this is without any paint, it looks like. So it does look pretty nice there without any paint. I'm guessing this is using some stickers though. Uh, and then over here, the one to one scale handgun. She can also ride on that. Her like hair and like the back of her head is like actually a, a camera scope kind of thing that turns into that for riding on top of the gun. So I guess there's just some different parts there for that. And over here, the Lady Commander Alice, a couple of different uh, poses that you can see. So she will have some different face, face option parts as well as some different hand option parts included with this. Let's go around here onto the other side of the box. And here, I guess there is this little stand. I'm not sure if the stand is included or not. What does it say here? Uh, there's a bit about the markings, so I guess the marks for each member can be recreated using the stickers. So I guess each of the three members of this team, I guess, have different markings on their gun. This sort of dinosaur, dog, or bird one. So I'm guessing we'll have all those stickers in there you can choose from. Uh, then you can change, I guess, or the, I guess the girl character changes into the model character or something like that, again, in the story. Here's some of the other ones that are out in the line, the guns versus uh, the girl characters that kind of go along with them. So you can see the mostly just color differences there, it looks like, for those. And the girl characters, though, are, are going to be more different in their designs. We can see there's some of those there. A little bit more about the anime, I guess, on that little blurb down there at the bottom. Why don't we just go ahead and get this opened up? So... Looks like we've got our uh, girl character parts, they're mostly on the top, and the gun parts below that. Let's go ahead and get down here to the bottom. Well, here's our cards, we'll take a look at those in just a second, and some other parts in there, some kind of like screw parts, I'm guessing that's probably like a little spring for the trigger of the gun or something like that. And then we've got two different instruction manuals for these because again I'm pretty sure these are also going to be available separately so you can buy like just the gun or just the girl, it's just that this set comes with both so they didn't put them into one instruction manual, they just broke it up into two for when they're sold separately. So we'll take a look at the uh, attack girl gun here first. So at the top of the manual there you can basically see what you have included, uh, the main handgun, a different attachment part there at the front and then these kind of bullet looking pieces there as well too. So you got a bunch of different text all about that. Uh, what is girl gun fight? There you have some more text about that. And the different characters here, you have some information about all of them. Going around here onto the back of the manual, about the pla mode attack, pla mode girl gun there with her riding on top of that and about the strike part there on the front. Down here you've got the marking guide where all the different marking stickers are gonna go on there. It looks like there's gonna be quite a lot of them. And our color guide, let's see, is there a color guide in here or not? Uh, I'm not seeing any color guide as far as I can tell, and, but there's our parts list up there at the top. And then it's just going to start with the construction of that. So it just shows you how to build everything. And then you've got your little girl character popping in every now and then to give you a little bits of advice. It says it can't be assembled properly if you don't check the shape of the spring and the attachment method. So it's just telling you to be careful of certain parts there. So I've got, I've got that added in there. And then here on the back side, the finish assembly here is in color. 
then adding that little attachment piece there on the end of that. Uh, how to mount it on the base, so it looks like we will have a base included with this as well too. And then how to mount the girl character onto that for the active girl gun ride system plow mode. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so anyway, as for the manual for the Lady Commander Alice, Here's the illustration. I mean, it's a cool illustration. It's just a shame the kit doesn't look quite as nice as the illustration there. But once again, you have some more information over here in Japanese and in English. On the back side, some more information there uh, about Lady Commander Alice's evaluation of Alpha Tango there. And some more posing down here so you can see what that looks like. Again, it's very weird having this out the back of the head. Uh, but that all goes into that. There we have a color guide, at least for this character. So I guess there's no color guide for the gun parts. It's strange. But uh, we should have a parts list in here as well. Let's see if we can find that. Once again, it's kind of small. That little bit right up there at the top is our parts list. And then the rest of this is just the construction of the girl. So let's go ahead and check out the runners. All right, so starting off with those cards, just to show you guys what you get included in case any of you are interested. Yeah, you've got the two cards. Here's the back. Here's the front, again just the two characters there in sort of holographic, Alice and uh, Koharu Tachibana there for the other girl characters. So there you go, uh, front and back of those cards. And for the gun parts, you've got these uh, two metal rods there, a little spring in there, and it looks like a couple of little spring uh, bits inside this little package here and all your marking stickers here for the gun as well too So you've got again the three different options there for whichever unit you want to make and then some of these other marking stickers there And for the girl character we've got foil stickers so foil stickers for the eyes and a bunch of little foil stickers for other little uh, Small little color apps around on the kit as well too so quite a lot of those unfortunately all right, so starting off with our base runner, this is an ABS plastic and it's in a molded silver. Looks pretty nice. Runner A, also in ABS, is in a molded gold. So you can see some nice detail around on those as well, too, it looks like. Runner B, also in molded silver, also in ABS plastic here for a few more parts. And runner C as well, also still here in molded silver ABS plastic. So I wonder if the entire gun is going to be all ABS. Because here's runner D in black, once again, still ABS parts of the gun. And the same thing for runner E here as well. More black parts, still ABS plastic. And yes, appears it is all going to be entirely ABS because here's the last of the parts for the gun. Runners F1 and F2 are in this light blue color, which looks a lot lighter on camera, but it's a kind of pretty nice light blue color. Uh, just some of the larger parts there in blue. Again, still all ABS plastic. Now getting into the parts for the uh, girl character. Now these are not in ABS, just regular polystyrene plastic. So you got some red, some black, some light blue, and some flesh tone parts there for her face and neck. Runner B1 is in a kind of a gunmetal color here. Dark gray, slightly metallic color there for some, a bunch of a detail parts and joint parts, things like that. And you got some more of that here on the C runner as well. And you've got two of these for what looks to be mostly joint parts and things like that. And runner D1 is back to some more metallic silver parts. Looks like some parts for the body and then maybe a stand independently for just the girl character herself. So you'll have a stand for her as well too, which is nice. And then runner D2 is just a copy of the section of the runner here. Runner E1 is in a little bit brighter blue. It's not quite the same light blue color like we saw on the gun. It's a little bit brighter. Uh, and this is just some hand parts and some other detail parts. Runner E2 is a few more skin tone parts, basically for like the upper arms, part of the thigh there, and the neck joint. And then runners F1 and F2 are just one single piece each. Clear red and red parts there for uh, her head and collar pieces. So there you go, guys. That's everything. It looks pretty interesting. Let me go ahead and get this put together and then we'll see how it looks. All right, guys, so we'll start off just by taking a look at the Alice kit by herself, and then we'll take a look at the gun, and then we'll take a look at the two of them together. But just building this kit up, it's relatively familiar if you've built any of the figure eye standard kits. It definitely seems very similar in the way that it's constructed uh, to that. There are some interesting points to the uh, actual articulation and the construction of this kit. Uh, but overall, I mean, it's kind of all right. I think the color separation is pretty good. Most of like the little silver accents and stuff you're seeing on there are all just stickers, of course. So there are quite a lot of those. There are a couple of silver parts, but they don't actually, that the molded silver doesn't really stand out all that much. So I kind of wish that that molded silver was molded in a little bit brighter silver to kind of match all the other little silver uh, bits that you see around that are made up by stickers because those are nice and bright. As far as the face goes, I mean, and you'll see that other different face options, I think they're a step in the right direction for Bandai. Still not quite as nice as the faces that we typically see on like Kodbukiya kits for example, but at least for this kit in the line the face looks uh, okay. So for our face options, like I said, I think the design of them looks better than in the past, but they're still relying on stickers and it seems like they kind of 
double down. They'll be like, okay, well, you want really nice looking eyes. Well, we'll make the eyes super big. So that way maybe we can add a lot of detail in there and that does look nice, but it's just all stickers. The closed eyes smiling face again looks fine, except that you got a white sticker in there that goes in the mouth and doesn't quite fit right. So that ends up just looking kind of weird. I guess that's supposed to be like a teeth, like smiling teeth, I suppose. And then the sort of angry face again, which is just a slightly different pose. The eyes are a uh, different sticker, but just the kind of face is just slightly different from that one. So again, like the expression, not bad. The molding, the detail of them, not bad. For our hand options, we've got a holding hand for the left and right side, but nothing really to hold except for the handles on the gun. Open hand for the left and right side, and then also a set of uh, pointing fingers for the left and the right side as well. Each of those hands has a little sticker on this back side of that. And then we've got this uh, stand here, which is pretty basic, just two pieces put together. And this plugs in right up here on the back of her back. If you put that up out of the way, this plugs right into there. You can see you have your standard action base adapter point right there in the lower back as well too. But this included stand just plugs right into the back there. And basically it's the height to help this to stand up without falling backwards because of, I guess, the it's a little bit back heavy. As you guys saw earlier though, I, it does stand on its own, but I guess it's to keep it from falling backwards because this part on the back of the head is kind of heavy. You could also do just kind of some standing poses or like one foot pose, something like this on the ground and just use that base for extra stability, uh, which is fine. But I just want to compare that briefly here to this. This is a stand that's typically included with the most Megami device and frame arms kits from Kurobukiya. Also very simple, just a couple of pieces, but it has a ball joint at the bottom and it has a ball joint at the top. And you can also raise that ball joint up and down to change the height of that. So it's very simple, but very effective. Whereas this, very simple, nicely detailed, I will say, it's got some nice detail on there, it's only two pieces, uh, but you can't change any angles, you can't do anything with it, you're just stuck with this one simple angle for that, so again, it's just kind of like Bandai's doing something, but it could have done a lot more with not adding that much more plastic to it. As for the rest of the kit, like I said, all these little silver bits are all little stickers. You got uh, movement up here in the head, basically a double ball joint, so movement at the neck should be fine, but I feel like if it starts to get loose over time, you're gonna find the head is gonna be sinking back because of the weight of this part here at the back. This part here at the front will, of course, fold forward like that, and that red, that clear red part does look nice, but I wish we had like a chrome mirror sticker to place underneath that clear red part. That would have looked really nice, but just get some silver paint or something under there to add to the detail. will look good. And then move this back. We got a gold sticker back here, no clear part with that. This little part that folds out like that, but we'll see that for the transformation later. We have a ball joint in the midsection that will allow you some forward and back movement there. A little bit of rotation here as well too. The shoulders can pull out to the front a little bit like that and then move up to about there is gonna be the limit. And then for the elbow joint, it's kind of unique. We have some rotation right above the elbow joint there, but then the elbow joint is made up of a, a single joint and then also a ball joint there. So the ball joint will allow you to kind of move this forearm around anywhere for a very wide range of posing. And then if you bend both together, you get a nice full bend there at the elbow, but it's kind of odd. Anyway, uh, seam lines through the forearm there and then the wrist is just attached via a ball joint there. It's a very interesting hip joint here for this. So it kind of rotates out a little bit and then kind of out at a weird angle, but it does, and it was kind of tricky. Well, now I just popped it out of there and now I'll just use this as an opportunity to mention how it is tricky to get this back into place. Uh, when you try to push that in, it's just basically going to push the ball joint down like that or completely out in that case. But when you try to push this up into the joint, it's just gonna push the ball joint down like that. And so it's kind of hard to actually get this up into the ball joint. So it's a little bit not really an ideal connection there. Anyway, the leg will also then rotate there at the kind of middle of the thigh. You can bring that up and out to the front. Well, let's see if I can not pop the legs out of place here. I know I am being a little bit rough with the kit just because I'm trying to get through showing you guys this articulation here, but that hip joint does seem to be a little bit uh, less than ideal. Anyway, the knee joint will bend about that much, so unfortunately not any more than that. It is a double joint, but you can't get really a full bend out of that. And at the ankle here it is a double ball joint, but the upper ball joint just seems to be not really allowing for that much movement. Oh, well, there's that. As you can see, most of the movement is just gonna be down here at the bottom and some nice separation of this part there for like the back of the foot. That's kind of interesting. So that moves 
kind of interestingly and exposes that little bit of blue in there which is kind of cool up underneath the feet it's gonna look like that and you can move these a little bit side to side there as well too at the ankle there but so while I don't want to focus too much on comparing this to Code Wukia, I feel like it's a fair comparison to make because it's obviously going after the same kind of target audience. If you're interested in Mecha Musume kits, and you're probably interested in the Code Wukia versions, and you're probably interested in this one as well too. Well, I feel like this series is probably also a little bit targeted more towards younger audiences, kids as well. Uh, to a little bit more where the Kotobukiya kits I feel like are probably not quite so much because this has a TV show I think because anything that has a TV show uh, that Bandai makes is going to be a little bit more targeted towards kids and so I get that aspect and certainly Bandai's uh, price point for these is definitely something uh, that is a major advantage they have over the Kotobukiya kits but just as far as those like overall quality uh, design and especially in terms of access accessories and different option parts things that you can use with them that the Kotobukiya is still just uh, trouncing Bandai when it comes to these kits. I feel like Bandai does have something very unique it's a pretty unique idea with these and so I mean that's certainly something adding you know some different option parts or something like that I don't know if something that's going to be something that's going to be coming in the future but I feel like they are definitely going to want to probably introduce some sort of option parts or something for these if, if they want the line to continue but I honestly kind of don't think that this is going to be a very long running line I think it's probably just going to be a handful of kits related to the stuff in the show and we probably won't see this uh, going on for all that long uh, probably so they're maybe not too invested in wanting to make a bunch of accessories and things like that for these and they're probably more so going to be focused Focused on the 30 Minute Sisters kits, for example, where that does seem to be the direction they're heading with those. But all right, guys, moving on to the gun. Now it's one to one scale, but it's still pretty small, and I have pretty big hands, so it's not going to be something that's going to fit very comfortably into my hand. I think if you're a Japanese high school girl, probably a little bit better suited for your hand or smaller, something like that. But I put all the sticker decals on there, and I went with the uh, Akiho version where it uses the little t-rex there i thought that was a pretty cool one and like i said i'm probably just gonna end up giving this to my son who likes dinosaurs so that worked out well anyway all the stickers on here do look pretty nice they certainly add a lot to that from just being straight out of the box having just basically blue and black and a couple little silver accents a little gold accent for the cartridge down there in the bottom you can pull that out of there and just this little kind of bullet shaped thing just made up of a couple pieces we've got three of those just taking a look at this close-up, you can see it is really nicely detailed and going ahead and like panel lining this in and maybe painting it, doing a little bit of weathering or something like that will certainly look very cool for this just as it is, but it has some interesting features here as well. The trigger on it does actually move. You can pull that back. That's got a little spring in there. The handle does fold up like that for basically it's a storage form. I'm not sure how this is actually stored or where it's stored, but you can store it. And we can mount this on our base here by removing the cartridge, then just slip that down onto there and then put this forward and like the little uh, trigger guard there will rest on that bit. And you can set your different cartridges here. You can put one right in here slide that into place right there in the handle and the other two it says you can put them around here on the base as well too kind of the ends of the base you can see there's that little raised circle but it's not very high and that's not really going to balance on there very well if you move that a little bit it's going to fall off there pretty easily so don't know if that's really a proper good place to store them or you might just want to like stick a little bit of glue on there if you don't mind having them stored permanently you can store them on the front there as well too but up underneath the base you do also have this extra little piece here which is maybe going to be hard to get out now this little piece is just used to connect multiple bases together so if you had multiples of these you can stick this onto here and connect them together like a lot of Banda action bases have that little kind of connection piece for you but anyway it's a cool base and a cool way to just display this if you just wanted to have it just all painted up nicely and then uh, there for display but uh, we can also change the front of this we have the option parts so you need to remove these two little bits like that and then you've got the uh, strike attachment here that will just plug onto there instead like so just right onto there which does look pretty cool i mean i like that it's a little bit more different a little bit more unique looking there with that attached onto there and that's basically it for the gun but of course then it can transform sort of to be able to use our character here with that as well to alice riding on there in order to do the transformation these side bits are like spring loaded so i think we're supposed to be able to just slide the back end back and the front end a little bit forward and these side parts are supposed to open up 
So let's see, oh, that works, yep, and that works like that. Kind of did it all at once, let me do it one more time just to show you guys. So that goes into there. All right, close that back up. Okay, one more time, just move that part back and that will release the sides and those drop down. You can slide this, I guess that's it. That just slides back just slightly just to release those. And then pulling this part, the front part forward will raise up the kind of uh, handle section that she'll hold on to. So you can see that kind of moves like that. Very cool, you slide that all the way, then little handles, you fold those down, and then you've got this little part up here at the front for her feet as well too, on each side. And I mentioned earlier in the back of Alice's head here, there's this part that pops down. This is gonna be used for helping to plug her onto the gun. So you have her sitting in there, and then this plugs in right into the back of here, I guess like this, like that. And there we have the plow mode. All right, so wow, yeah, you definitely gotta give it up to Bandai for the uniqueness factor, no doubt about that. It's certainly different. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know, it's it's it's, it's interesting, yeah. <laughs> so what do you guys think about that? I think the functionality of the gun is actually kind of interesting, how the parts kind of slide and open up and all that. That's pretty cool. That's an interesting thing about uh, that. The actual Alice kits, honestly, not that interesting. It's not that exciting of a kit. If you like the design, then I would say go for it and check it out because it's, you know, it's a fine kit. I just didn't find it all personally that interesting. Uh, the gun is not something that I would have thought I would have really liked all that much, just being like a model toy gun, but it was, it was kind of fun. It was very different, and as I always say, I like building something different every now and then, so it, it was enjoyable to build something like of that size, and that's actually kind of like a one-to-one -one scale thing, and again, like the the spring-loaded action and stuff in there is all kind of fun to play around with. So. I think that's going to be about it for this review, guys, of this line. I'm not sure if I'm going to build any more kits in the line at this point. I don't have any plans to, but, you know, we'll see how the line goes if something else comes out that's particularly interesting to me. Maybe I'll check uh, one or more, one or two more of them. But what do you guys think of the line in general? Is it something you're interested in or not? What do you think about that? Now, like I think I may have said before, these kits are currently not scheduled to be imported into the US, so as I normally recommend you guys to check out USA Gundam Store, I will recommend you to check out USA Gundam Store for other things, but at the moment we are not going to be able to get these kits in unless something changes, but for the moment, uh, I know that we're not going to be able to carry these just because Bandai is not bringing them into the US at this point for some reason. But if you guys are really interested in the kits, you know, let Bandai know, tweet at them or something I guess like that, or at uh, Bluefin which is also Bluefin Bandai there in the US. But of course you guys can check out the link down in the video description to USA Gunham Store and shop for all sorts of other good stuff there. And use my coupon code there, Zakurilius10, to save 10% off anything you find there cool on the site. And there's certainly a lot of cool things to find. So until next time guys, hope you're all having a great day. Hope this was interesting and I'll see y'all later. Bye-bye.